grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Good morning. morning. Welcome on this, the ninth Sunday after Trinity. Welcome back, perhaps to some who this might be your first time out uh, since the lockdown, and welcome to any who are visiting us here today. And a particular welcome, as ever, to those who are joining us online through our live stream service. To say to those who are watching us online, we plan to wind down the live feed to YouTube by the month. So if you're used to watching on live on YouTube, please go to our website and the player is on the home page instead. Recordings of the Sunday services will continue to be put on, up on YouTube later on on Sunday afternoons, but that's from the end of this month. As we gather today, we pray that we may be people of courage and that we may drive out all fear that we encounter in this life. So we pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may walk in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your Church, open our hearts to the riches of his grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, No one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. This is the word of the Lord. Savior Christ according to St. Matthew, chapter 14, beginning at verse 22. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Immediately after feeding the crowd with the five loaves and two fish, Jesus made the, the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. 
and early in the morning he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost, and they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May what I speak, what we hear, be in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Matthew chapter 14, verse 28. Peter answered Jesus, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. I will listen, says the psalm set for today. I will listen to what the Lord God will say. Truly his salvation is near. We are called today to listen to Christ. His word is near us, says St. Paul in the epistle reading of today. The word is near you, he says. Christ is here. In this sacrament we know him. You who are in this cathedral, you who are receiving spiritual communion at home at this time. Here, now, he grasps us, just as he grasped Peter when he began to sink. Here, he encourages us and rebukes us and calls us and holds us. He says to you today, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. He is saying to you, You of little faith, why did you doubt? He says to you, Come. Who is this God who speaks to us, who is close to us in Jesus? Matthew's account of Jesus walking on the water is written with drama and with allusions to the Jewish sacred scriptures. Its purpose is to reveal to us who Jesus is. When Jesus walks on water, that means that Jesus walks over both life and death as divine Lord. Water is a symbol in the Bible of chaos. Walking over it is something that God does. Truly, they say that say the disciples, you are the Son of God. When we meet Jesus in this Eucharist, we meet him as God, as the one who is Lord over everything that may happen to us in this coming week, COVID-19 or anything else. He treads down the floods of chaos. On a similar note, he is in control of the life-giving waters of the Holy Spirit. They are his to give in his risen life. There may be times when we feel that he is not with us, but, says the story to Matthew's early community and to us today, Christ is always coming to us and to our little boat, the church, and nothing can stop him. Matthew's account of this miracle adds a dimension which is not there in the parallel accounts in Mark chapter 6 and John chapter 6. Beyond asking, who is this Jesus? Matthew's account also asks, who are we? Matthew does this by concentrating not just on Christ, but more than that, on Christ and Peter. Matthew says in the Gospel reading of today that Peter very nearly got to walk on water alongside Jesus. The Christian community that wrote Matthew's Gospel wrote and worked around Antioch, 
a place which was particularly associated with Peter's ministry, according to early tradition. Peter is important to this community of Matthew's gospel. He is a symbol to them of the calling from Christ, the Christian calling which is in your baptism and in mine. For Matthew's community, what is true of Peter is also meant to be true of us as the baptized. Up the road from Matthew's community in modern Turkey was a community which prized documents like the first letter of Peter. There, this great man, Peter, is displayed as writing that our baptism makes us just as important, just as great as he is, a royal priesthood. For example, he says, that's what we are. In chapter 3 of that first letter, Peter pursues the same boat-in-a-storm image which would have been dominant in the minds of the beleaguered Matthew community down the road in, in, in Antioch. Peter writes that our baptism makes us just like the people in Noah's ark. They were frail, they were few, eight people, says that chapter 3. They went through water, it says, just like us. The sense is that Noah's small family and his boatload, and we, just like them, are a new start for the world. Transfer this parallel thought to today's Gospel reading. Peter, the figurehead of the Church, frail, human, is called by Christ to step out into a world of chaos and to be with Christ, to be held by Christ's hand. We, the Church, the baptized, are to follow Peter. We are called to step out into the unknown, to come to Christ in the baptism life he gives us, union with him in his dying to self and his rising to new life. What it means is that like Peter, we are called to walk on water and to put our hand into the hand of Christ. This week we are called to walk over things that threaten to overwhelm us. The way we are to do this is not by acts of rashness or desperation. The voice of Christ which says, Come, is near us, says St. Paul in the epistle reading of today. The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart, he says. He is quoting from Deuteronomy chapter 30. And his previous quotes from the same passage uh, obviously mean something important to him. We do not have to climb up to heaven, he quotes, with unreasonable hopes, he means, perhaps partying into the night in the sincere hope that God will stop us from getting COVID-19 from others. We do not have to go down into the abyss, quotes St. Paul again from Deuteronomy chapter 30. With desperate measures, he means, like, for instance, throwing away our face masks because we really, really believe that God will stop us from spreading the coronavirus to those around us. Instead, says St. Paul, we are to be with him because he is here. In a simple prayer of stillness, of contemplation, like Peter, Fix your eyes on Jesus who is with you, who is in you, who knows how to bring to completion the good work he has begun in you. Unlike Peter, do not notice the strong wind, the waves, the things that worry you, the things that distract you from being simply there with Jesus. Gently put these distractions aside and return to the prayer the prayer without words, the prayer without thoughts even, where you simply look at Jesus and he looks at you. During this week, give yourself two short periods of prayer like this every day. Spoil yourselves. Let each period last 20 minutes. Simply be in the presence of the Lord Jesus and let him be with you, his spirit in your spirit. Let him be the breath of your breath, 
as St. Augustine once said. And then for the rest of the week, discover yourselves to feel energized. We will walk on water. We will face fears that crippled us all our lives and cripple us in the strange conditions of today. We will face the, that ever-present triplet, ever triplet of fear, fear of loss, fear of failure, fear of being found not important. We will face fear and we will walk over it and we will be the baptized, those who walk through life holding the hand of the Lord, casting out fear by the perfect love which he gives. Be prepared to be something different this week. Be prepared to be the start of a new world like those frail and few in Noah's Ark. Christ is with you and Christ is Lord. Let us listen to his summons to come to him and let us become like him. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So let us proclaim our faith in the God whom we seek and the God who transform, transforms our fears. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The intercessions, let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your sovereign word is to us, is near us in Christ. And you promised through his presence to, with us to hear the prayers of those who ask in faith. Lord of your people, we pray for your church in all the world, for areas where the church is struggling or being overwhelmed, for those whom you send to proclaim you as evangelists and pastors who are overworked or in danger. We pray for the Anglican Communion and the province of the Anglican Church of Rwanda. We pray for the Porvo Commune of Churches of Northern Europe, for the Diocese of Stockholm in Sweden. For this diocese, for Paul our Bishop, for his healing, for the parish of Douglas Union with Frankfield, for Adrian Wilkinson and Hazel Minion, its priests. We pray for the work of the diocesan magazine, for Isabel Dunn and her team. We pray for this cathedral community. We pray for our vocation from Christ to spread the good news. In the storms of life, bid your church come to you, that we who are a witness may be made strong. Fix our eyes on a new vision of your power to save in Jesus, that we may always acclaim him as Lord. Support our small steps of faith as we try to express the beauty and peace of the good news in your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of creation, we pray for the well-being of this world, 
for the call of humanity in it, for its nations and its refugees, for those who are swamped by natural disaster, poverty or hunger, for all who are battered by waves of oppression and, of, and violence, of threat of warfare. We pray for this republic for our president and all in authority. We pray for the communities in which we live and work. We pray for our prisons and those in the probationary services. We remember all who, like Christ in the gospel reading, give a helping hand to those in need, the home carers, home helps, social workers. We pray for those who find their care of another person overwhelming. We pray for all on holiday at this time for renewal in the sense of the beauty of your presence. Calm the storms that trouble the world. Through the word of truth, bring a new vision of Christ who is close to all but unseen by many. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all healing, we pray for those who are down, for the fearful, the weary, the despairing, for those who are threatened with deportation, for those who are sick, Ruth. We pray for all who are unable to help themselves. Bear up those who sink beneath the waves of pain and sorrow. Bring them close to you and the healing power of Christ's Spirit in perfect faith and trust. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of eternity, we bless your holy name for all your servants who have died in faith, for Fachner, founder of your church in Ross, whose feast day is on Friday. May Christ your Son reach out his hand to hold fast those who have heard and trusted in his word, and all those who in their lives have sought to reach you. We pray that when we pass through the waters of death, we may share with them the joys of your eternal kingdom. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these our prayers prayer. for the sake, sake of, of your, your Son, Son our, our Saviour, Savior Jesus. Christ. Amen. Amen. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. Amen. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father Almighty and ever-living God, at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. And so, with all your people, 
with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Blessed are you, Father, the creator and sustainer of all things. You made us in your own image, male and female, you created us. Even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten Son to become man and suffer death on the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all-sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, 
And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded. We remember his passion and death. We celebrate his resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, grant by the power of the life-giving Spirit that we may be made one in your holy church and partakers of the body and blood of your Son, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father.
Holy Father, who gathered us here around the table of your Son to share this meal with the whole household of God, in that new world where you reveal the fullness of your peace, gather people of every race and language to share in the eternal banquet of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.